السلام عليكم طلبتنا الأعزاء المرحلة الثانية باسمه تعالى نبدأ تسجيل هذه المحاضرة بهذه الطريقة في محاولة إيصال المعلومة إليكم بشكل أفضل إن شاء الله In the following lectures I will talk about gastrointestinal system We will discuss the gut physiology through this item in detail The motility, the secretion the digestion process and absorption process. As you know, the alimentary tract provides the body with continual supply of water, electrolyte, and nutrients. To achieve this, require movement of food through the alimentary tract, secretion of digestive enzyme, absorption of water and nutrients and circulation of blood through the gastrointestinal system. All these process of movement, secretion, digestion, absorption will need control by either local or nervous or hormonal system. Here this figure is just for illustration. It illustrates the gastrointestinal system from the mouth to the anus. You can see the GIT system starting from the mouth to the pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. In addition, you have the liver, pancreas, gallbladder, and salivary gland. فهذا الشكل ليس للحفظ. Just to remind you about the main parts of GIT system. This is a cross-sectional view in the gut. <coughs> Showing you the muscle, we have two types of muscle, longitudinal muscle and circular muscle. Near to the longitudinal muscle, we have mainly the myenteric nerve plexus. While near to the submucosa, we have submucosal gland, or we call it Meissner nerve plexus. Here we are concentrating on these two nerve plexus. And we will talk about this in detail in the following slide, but as the figure is here, as you see, my entric nerve plexus is near the longitudinal muscle, so it is mainly responsible about the movement of food. While the major nerve plexus or submucosal gland is near to the submucosa, so it's mainly responsible for the secretion of a gland. Again, this figure is just for illustration. So you have two types of muscle, longitudinal muscle layer extend along the intestinal tract. And you have circular muscle layer extend around the gut only. So we talk about the neural control of gastrointestinal system. There is unique enteric nervous system for the GIT system. You can see here in the figure central nervous system control sympathetic parasympathetic system have effect on enteric nervous system and again they will send sensory sig signals to prevertebral ganglia to the central nervous system or you have this figure again this is requested from you the epithelial cell of GIT system controlled by submucosal plexus my enteric plexus as we mentioned previously which controlled by sympathetic and parasympathetic. And you can see here the arouse, had the sensory neuron to the prevertebral ganglia, spinal cord, and the brain stem. This is again requested from you. Had a shikil matlub min andek al Here, the same thing in words. Had the nafs al kalam li kalamna bi kalimat. So, this is. A common question you can face in the exam 
So either you will draw or you will talk just to reach the idea. The question, what is, what is the neural control of GIT system? So either you will talk in words or you can draw any figure you want. Here the same what we talk, you have two main plexus, mind trick plexus, or we call it other name, Olbach plexus, and you have submucosal plexus or Meissner plexus. These are the main control of GIT, which is controlled by sympathetic and parasympathetic plexus. As I mentioned, mind trick plexus, because of its position near the longitudinal muscle, so it is responsible mainly for controlling the muscle activity. While submucosal plexus, because of its position near to the <coughs> sorry, near to the submucosa, so it is mainly responsible for the secretion. Other control of GIT system process we have hormonal control. Here, these names are not requested from you, but you should be familiar with this name. هذه الأسامي هي ليست الحفظ وليس ولست مطالبا بها، لكن يجب أن تكون مألوفة لديك. You should be familiar with this name. Hormones secreted from stomach, like gastrin, somatostatin, from duodenum, from pancreatic islet, from ileum or colon. You have many hormones that control the GIT function. Other control, you have a neural transmitter secreted by enteric neuron, like acetylcholine, norepinephrine, adenosine, serotonin, dopamine, and so on. This again not requested from you to remember, but at least you should be familiar with this name. Acetylcholine usually excites. GIT activity, while norepinephrine and epinephrine almost always inhibit gastrointestinal activity. We will take some example of important hormone like gastrin. Gastrin from the name is secreted from G cell of antrum of the stomach and it is associated with ingestion of meal, distension of the stomach, presence of a protein, so primary action of gastrin is stimulation of gastric acid secretion and stimulation of growth of gastric mucosa. Other hormone secreted from GIT is cholecystokinin, which is secreted from eye cell from the duodenum and associated with digestion of fat. Secretin, again another hormone secreted from S cell in the duodenum. Motilin is secreted from upper duodenum during fasting and is responsible to increase the GIT motility. In general, we have two type of movement, for pulsive movement, mixing movement. For pulsive movement, like this figure, you have area of contraction and area of distension. So by this, will help to move the food through the GIT tract. While the other movement, you have mixing movement. Sorry. You have mixing movement which is responsible to mix the food through that part of GIT tract. So you have two types of movement for pulsive and mixing movement. Here this figure is just for illustration. We have another control for GI tract function which is the blood supply. As you know you have arterial and venous blood supply. Again, this is not requested from you, just you know more detail in the anatomy. Here, 
here you have arterial supply for GIT and you have the minute arterial and venules in the small intestine so there is a blood supply that control the GIT function it is important in the control there is possible causes of an increased blood flow during gastrointestinal activity till now this is not so clear but there is some mechanism that will cause an increasing blood flow during G GIT activity first there is secretion of some vasodilator like cholecystokinin vasoactive intestinal peptide gastrin and secretin and secretion of two kinins also they act as powerful vasodilator so these two secretion will act as vasodilator they will increase the blood flow during the digestion process the third mechanism is decreased oxygen concentration in the gut wall can increase intestinal blood flow so here you can notice this is this is a question you can face in the exam what is the possible causes of increased blood flow during gastrointestinal activity فممكن هذا السؤال يكون وارد بالامتحان other common question as I explained previously the neural, neural control of GIT function so please concentrate on these things and as I mentioned you can answer by figure or you can answer by words as you like it is up to you and thank you very much